Shame is blame turned against the self. That's what Eric Erickson said about shame. And there's some real valuable information there for those of us who have CPTSD. So in this season four finale, let's talk about it. Hello, I'm Tabitha Bird Weaver with CPTSD Podcast. I'm a licensed therapist, and one of my passions is helping people figure out that they have CPTSD, what that means, and how to shift their lives and their self concept enough to heal from that. So, when we talk about shame being blamed, turned against the self, where that idea comes from is that when we're kids and our parents are Uh, demanding that we be different than who we are and looking for a reason that there's distress in the family and they end up blaming the kid. If you were just a better kid, then our household wouldn't be so messy or I wouldn't have to yell at you if you just did what I say. And so that blame gets absorbed by us and we turn it inside. And then we use that for the rest of our lives to criticize and critique ourselves and take responsibility for things that are not our responsibility and also not understand how to take responsibility and accountability for things that are. And so this is kind of a heavy hitting way, excuse me, my dog wants out real quick. It's a heavy hitting way to start reshaping the way we think about shame and our inner critic. So one of the things I want to talk about today is that a lot of us with CPTSD or other things that make us different than the average in society, we're always and constantly looking for a reason why. Why did that happen? Why am I like this? Why are people like that? Why is this so hard? There's always a why question and we're curious. And so why questions are intriguing and also not very helpful. Um, So what we're going to do is take that why that you have internalized blame and turned it into shame, which is a natural process. There's no fault in it. But let's look at what that does to some of your current experiences. Shame is a real quick uh, gateway into thinking errors. And there are two that I want to talk about today. One is perfectionism and the other is all or nothing thinking. And it's really easy for us to pop into those modes or ways of being when we have CPTSD because we're in distress frequently and we would like a solution. And so we're always trying to find that why question. So here is a couple are a couple of ideas on what to do um, when you are feeling emotionally overwhelmed and that is impacting your ability to think. Right. The first thing you're going to do is calm the heck down. And so we've talked a lot in this podcast about how to calm. And I don't mean that like you're overreacting, calm down, although that could be true. I more mean soothe your nervous system. We've talked about a lot of different ways to soothe your nervous system and to calm it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have emotion. It just means that you are within that window of tolerance so that your body is functioning the way it needs to be. You're not in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Okay. And if you don't know what those things are, we've also talked a lot about that on this podcast, or you can Google it. It's, it's going to be easy to find. When we are thinking about perfectionism, this is a method of control for a lot of us because we learned as kids or young adults that if we manage our environment and manage how we present ourselves, things go better for us. And while there is some truth to that on occasion, we end up losing who we are because none of us are perfect. And if we're always striving for that or thinking that that is the criteria, then we're not really giving ourselves an opportunity to know us as we actually are, not as we're presenting. Okay. And all or nothing thinking is 
an experience in in my experience it's either habit or desperation that can lead us into all or nothing thinking it either has to be this way or that way and there's no middle ground and there's no way to negotiate and when we have strong emotional responses and strong sensate responses to things in our environment including our anticipation of how things might go it's really easy to get into all or nothing thinking because it seems like there's clarity. It's either this or it's that. Um, but that's actually sometimes less clear because as we know, the world is full of nuance and context. And so if, if perfectionism or all or nothing thinking are things that you struggle with, it may be time to reassess your assumptions on your environment. When we have perfectionism, we create that as a way to try and stay as safe as we can in dangerous families. And all or nothing thinking is another way to limit criticism or judgment, right? But it increases blame and shame. And so here's my tip for this week. If you're experiencing perfectionism or all or nothing thinking, one of the things that you can do after you take a pause and regulate your nervous system is to just consider where that's coming from and how it keeps you safe now. Now, your first response might be, it doesn't keep me safe. It creates fights and I'm always critical of myself. So, so we get that. But go a little deeper. How does it keep you safe now? I also want to just point out that um, CPTSD creates neurodiversity in us. Our nervous systems are not typical because of the experiences that we've had. And our brain function is not typical because of the experiences we've had. And so some perfectionism or all or nothing thinking can literally come from being overstimulated. There's too much going on for your nervous system to handle, or maybe not enough going on, but usually overstimulation is the way I see it come into my clinic first. So what can you shift about your environment and your perception to move you away from, per, um, from perceived criticism and perfectionism? What do you notice and how can you rethink your position? Thinking isn't the only thing that's going to change this, but understanding the thoughts you have can help us understand how you are anticipating the things that are creating the distress for you. And remember that all of the things that you are anticipating or experiencing are there for a really good reason and it's nobody's fault. And that's getting me back on topic to where I wanted to head. This isn't somebody's fault. When we think somebody has a fault or is at fault, it really limits the options that we have to change the situation because fault requires accountability versus just how the situation is. And so I have a recommendation for you so that you can start to understand some of your thinking and some of your sensory experiences. Um, if you're willing, please go to a website called embrace autism dot, I believe it's an org, but we'll put the address in the description of this um, podcast or YouTube video below. And take the top three assessments that are there. One is called the AQ, the other is the RAADS, and the third is the ASDS, I think. And they will screen for autism and ADHD. Now, you do not have to have autism or ADHD to have neural diversity. If you have CPTSD, that totally counts. However, there is a really big overlap between those of us who have CPTSD and those of us who have some form of neurodiverse um, functionality in our body, you know, that neurodiversity. And so it's a good idea to screen for that for yourself because you may be treating the wrong problem. And we'll talk about that more in season five. Um, but just go there and get a baseline. How does your nervous system and your brain work compared to the average person? That baseline can help you understand where you need accommodation and accommodation cannot happen with all or nothing thinking or perfectionism and accommodation is what is required for you to heal.
you must accommodate your nervous system. Otherwise, you will continue to degrade or harm your nervous system or at best, not feel as good as you could. So it, it's, um, I'm, I'm urging you with as much gentleness as possible to check out what's going on with your whole nervous system and then begin to reframe some of the perfectionism, all or nothing thinking, shame, blame game into how can I accommodate myself? I hope that that provides some insight for you and that those assessments, if you choose to do them, provide a lot of good data and information. Um, the website that I mentioned has context put around each of those assessments by the professionals who created the site, which is really helpful. So I would encourage you to read the page before you start the quiz, just so you understand how it works. Um, all of those assessments do have like what your score means um, related to that page. So you'll understand what your score means and maybe even some next steps. If you find out that you have autism or ADHD or the potential of that, take a breath and um, just process that information the best you can. And then think about what that means for you. And hopefully you have a therapist or a general practitioner or, you know, primary care provider that can help process that with you. If you decide that you would like to start therapy, I highly recommend um, that you get the definitive guide for finding a therapist and also consider the CPTSD toolkit that talks about each of the therapies that are really successful in treating CPTSD. Um, and see if that helps you figure out what kind of therapy you're looking for, because not all therapists do all therapies. So you need both a good therapist and a good therapy. All right. Um, in the meantime, I want to let you know that I'm going to be taking a break from the podcast until probably the new year. I am starting a program. Um, we meet December 4th for the first time. So I'm going to be giving that a lot of my attention. It's called Recalibrate. And if you're interested, you can look that up on our website. Um, I'm just real stoked to be able to create a program that blends hardcore science and why things happen. There's that why again, um, in ourselves and our bodies as they do with softer sciences of therapy, coaching and energy work to help us move through the process. So, um, if you're interested in what that looks like, it's online. There's no requirement. The program for mentoring, um, is almost full. And so please don't take this as a pitch. I think that it's, it's probably full right now, but if you're interested, you can go see what that looks like and, um, an alternative to even the traditional therapies that I'm mentioning in the CPTSD toolkit. I am so grateful that you are here. I am grateful that you are here with me and I'm grateful that you want to care for yourself. So during this next holiday season, please do that accommodate yourself and your nervous system. One way to do that is to just think about, um, let's say an activity that you're considering doing and see how that makes you feel. If you feel like it's a good idea and it feels great to you, go to the appointment or the gathering. If it feels too stressful, maybe it's okay for you not to go. Maybe that is okay. Just consider that for yourself. Again, I want to express my gratitude and let you know I'm really looking forward to seeing you in 2024. Until then, please um, review any of the information on the website that would be helpful for you or this YouTube channel and just breathe. See you later. I hope that you keep it light and take it easy. Bye.